This is an open message to California Governor Gavin Newsom. In November, I reached out to you. I asked you to join 12 other states and almost 250 cities and counties around the country who had declared November as Family Court Awareness Month. We never heard back from your office. Last night, three more children were murdered in cold blood in Sacramento, California. When I visited Sacramento in November, I met with Amy Hunter, whose two daughters were murdered in a burning car by their father, who only wanted revenge and to hurt Amy Hunter. She was failed by the family court system. The mother who lost her daughters last night, her three beautiful daughters. This is not a gun violence issue. It's easy to, to wash it away as that. It's so much bigger than that. When you frame this as a gun violence issue, you are doing a huge disservice to all victims of domestic violence and victims of the family court system. We need to call it what it is. It's domestic violence. It's post-separation abuse. It's a family court failure. Putting the focus on this as a gun violence issue lets the lawmakers off the hook on domestic violence and the crisis that is happening in our family court system. My family court journey started in 2009 in San Luis Obispo, California. Since my battle started, there have been almost 830 children murdered by separating or divorcing parents or caregivers. A very conservative estimate is that tens of thousands of children are sent into abusive situations each and every year. Our present day family court system, parental rights trump child safety. The individual who murdered his three daughters yesterday in Sacramento should have never had access to these children. The family court system is failing. We have judicial officers and other family court professionals who have zero, zero training in domestic violence, yet they're holding our children's lives and the future of our world in their hands. I invite you to watch this very short clip from Jon Stewart, but it is a powerful clip and it speaks to the reality of our system. But before you do that, I want you to understand we are failing victims of domestic violence. We are telling them to be brave and to leave the abuse, that that's the right thing to do. And then they walk into our family court system and they find an entirely new form of abuse post-separation abuse, where their children are used as pawns and weapons, and they are further victimized by a system that blames them for marrying this person after they've just been told, be brave, leave. Our system is so broken on so many levels. We need you to declare November 2022 and every year after as Family Court Awareness Month, but even bigger than that, we need to put accountability where it belongs. This is not a gun violence issue. This is a family court crisis. We obviously can't agree on who the good guys are, and we can't seem to agree on who the bad guys are. So what are we supposed to do here? It's not a sci-fi Tom Cruise movie where we have some magical premonition of which bad guys are about to commit a violent crime and can intervene in the crime before it's too late. Or is it? It appears a domestic dispute led to the massacre at a Texas church that left at least 26 people dead. The gunman, Devin Kelly, had a history of domestic violence. The GOP shooting at the baseball diamond. He had a, a history of domestic violence. Reports of uh, domestic abuse, mm -hmm. domestic violence. Domestic violence complaints against him. And an allegation of domestic violence. History of domestic violence. Six arrests for domestic violence. Domestic violence. Domestic violence. 20 years old and already has a domestic violence history. Domestic violence offenders. It turns out domestic violence 
is a predictor for gun violence. In fact, there's a study that suggests a felony domestic violence conviction is the single greatest predictor of future violent crime among men. This is our sci-fi movie fix. Because if we simply kept guns away from domestic violence offenders, we could potentially stop 60% of mass shootings, 30% of child firearm deaths, more than 50% of women, 65%, 75%, oh, okay, I'm sorry, fuckload. <laughs> Every 14 hours, an American woman is shot dead by an intimate partner. You might not care about any of that. And if you're the type of person who doesn't care about any of that, I do think I know an area that may speak to you more. Two police officers shot and killed responding to a domestic violence call. A rookie police officer was gunned down responding to a domestic violence call. Shot and killed early this morning responding to a domestic violence call. Shot and killed while responding to a domestic violence call. Responding to a domestic violence call. Shot and killed in the line of duty. They were reportedly responding to a domestic violence call. It turns out removing guns from domestic violence offenders also backs the blue. Between 2015 and 2016, domestic dispute calls made up 41% of all fatal police calls. For police, domestic violence calls are the single most dangerous calls that they respond to. So why are we letting these wife-beating cop killers get away with literal mass murder? And why is the Lifetime Channel the only network covering this phenomenon 24 hours a day?